What up, my poker peeps? It's the Hatter. Now, as y'all know, we got the 10 NL challenge going, so I want to bring y'all some hands. The first thing I want to show y'all is I got Ace Queen under the gun suited. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up. And the flop comes two of spades, nine of hearts, seven of diamonds. I go ahead and down bet. I would do this with all my over pairs pretty much on this board. It's a pretty dry board. And when I do this, he ends up doing something that kind of shocked me. He goes ahead and check raises here. And I take a minute to think about it. And honestly, he shouldn't have many check raises on this board. A set shouldn't be doing it because the, he has me way trapped. If I do have over pair, he should, or if I'm keep all my bluffs in, he should let me barrel off. And what two pair combos does he have? Maybe nine, seven suited, but there's only two combos of that. So at this point, I'm putting him on two overs, maybe top pair, but we're going to see. So I go ahead and call because I got backdoor spades. I got two overs. Unfortunately, we bricked the turn. And when he checks, I definitely want to don't want to face another check race. So I check back, take my free card, hoping to improve, which sadly we don't. And he's on check. And at this point, I can check, take ace high to value, which I do. I don't know, y'all. That's kind of, I just didn't believe his check raise at all. So now we go to pocket aces. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm always opening up my aces here. Unless I see a situation where someone's being super aggressive and I think I put the limp trap in, but I try not to do that very often. It definitely has to do with player and table dynamics. So eventually it's going to get over to the small blind and he's going to make a call. And a big blind is eventually going to fold. And we go to a flop of a jack of diamonds, eight of spades, nine of spades. I'm going to go ahead. I wish I would have bet bigger here, but I down bet again. Um, the board's a little too wet and connected for me to down bet here. I should definitely be going maybe three, three quarters here. He makes a quick call. He's on check again. Now I decide to size up. I'm pretty protected with the ace of spades here. I believe having the ace of, or the ace of spades is very important. So I go ahead and bet three quarters pot and he's going to get out of the way. Not really excited about how I played that hand either. And I'm going to be honest with y'all and I'll talk about it in podcast. Getting back into the grind of playing online four tabling and two tabling is taking me a minute. So I'm definitely not playing my AA game. Definitely making some mistakes, but that's all right. We're here to improve, y'all. So the next hand of note is going to be ace queen on the button. And I just want to go ahead and let y'all know before we get involved in this hand, I do not like the way I play this hand at all. So it's going to go over to the cutoff. He's going to limp in. And on the button with ace queen, I'm definitely putting in a raise. And I go to 40 cent. And the reason I raise that amount is usually my standard raise is 3x. And then I add 1x per limper. So that's how we eventually get to this 40 cent raise you're about to see. And then the small blind and big blind are eventually going to fold and we are going to go to a flop. So at this point, I mean, his hand, his range is pretty much, I'm thinking suited connectors, maybe some Broadway hands, maybe some small pairs. So when the board comes monotone spades, I don't hold a spade, of course. I start to go ahead and bet here, but I decided to check for deception thinking, you know, what really can call. So when the ace of hearts comes off, now I feel like I got the board completely locked up and I'm really hoping he's going to take a stab here. So he eventually checks and I probably should be betting here, but I decide to go full deception and trap here and I check and I get the perfect river card. It's the queen of spades. So with 91 in a pot, he overbets to a buck. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put in a raise. I'm trying to figure out how polarizing I want it. I decided to go more value based and go three X here to three bucks. And what I'm really targeting is like a high spade, like the king of spades particularly, but maybe the 10 of spades. And eventually he's going to go ahead and make the crying call. Unfortunately, he doesn't show his hand, but I'm pretty sure he probably had a high spade or maybe he just thought I was really full of it, but I think he had the king of spades. So that's an interesting hand. Don't like the way I play it. Y'all give me y'all's thoughts on how you would play flop and turn on a monotone board like that. So the next hand you might've seen in one of my shorts, I got pocket Kings on the button and the guy right here, that's going to go ahead and raise from middle position. He's been opening up a lot. So one thing I've noticed is when he opens, he's pretty much calling a lot of different sizes, bigger sizes. He likes to see flops. So I go ahead and go with a bigger raise sizing here, knowing that he's probably going to call. And then I'm hoping to fade the dreaded ace on the flop. If y'all know what I'm talking about. Every time you got Kings ace on the flop, it seems like. So I go ahead and size it up a little bigger, go to 131. Of course, he's going to make the call. 
and we get a flop of deuce 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 and at this point he's going to go ahead and check i go ahead and bet a little bigger because i definitely want to make him think that i don't want him around because aces i'd probably check kings i'd probably check or small bet i decide to go big bet try to get him to spaz out which he does he shoves it in i snap it off and he has pocket yep there y'all see it nine on the turn wow two outer what are you gonna do you just gotta shake it off go to the next hand and that's what we're gonna do in this review we're just gonna shake that hand off forget about it go to the next one so now we have king 10 of diamonds second at, at this point I'm a little stuck after the last hand, so I'm playing a little wider than I probably should. And this right here is probably more of a three bet than just a flat, but I decided to flat the min raise under the gun. Sorry, pulling up another table in real time. And my man right here in the small blinds is going to go ahead and bump it up to 90. When the under the gun calls, I go ahead and call. I'm getting a decent price at this point. And I flop the nut flush draw. It checks to me. I think about betting, but I decided to go ahead and take the free card since the board's paired. And Bink City, we actually have a royal draw right here, y'all. So this is a great situation. Now my man's going to lead out for 73. And when this guy in the middle calls the 73, I just don't think I can just call. So I want to put in a raise. And you'll see that I go ahead and maybe I went a little too big on my raise. But I definitely want to charge them to draw to boats or if someone else may have like the jack of diamonds or something like that. Or if there's a worse flush draw, we got to get value from that or any two pair of hands that might want to stick around. I don't see much 2x in range. So I go ahead and call the short stacks. So I'm going to go ahead and snap me off with ace queen and we fade the river. There we go. About time we fade it something. Let's go. Okay, so this is going to be the last hand of the review, and I put this one in here for a special reason because I want to talk about table dynamics, player dynamics. So the big blind has been doing a lot of three betting, way too much. There's no way he's getting as many hands. So when I open up the button here, I know that I'm going post-flop with this guy. He's got to show me one because he's just taking way too many down. He's trying to bully the table. So when he goes ahead and puts in the three bet that I'm expecting, of course, I'm going to go ahead and make the call. That was my plan. I'm playing in position. That's important. Make sure when you're, you're doing stuff like this, you're in position. Be positional awareness. So I'm expecting him to see bet almost 100% of the time, no matter what the board was. Now, my hand could definitely be suited connectors. It could be pocket pairs. It could be, you know, some low Broadway hands. But he knows I'm not at the top of my range. So he's going to go ahead and bet like I knew he was going to do. I go ahead and call. And when the board pairs the seven, the top card, that's actually pretty good. At this point, I'm going to go ahead. And if he checks or shows any kind of weakness, I'm going for it. So I already have a plan. When he checks, which he eventually is going to do, I go ahead and bet about two thirds. And I want it to make it bigger. Like I have a seven, seven, six. I want to rep a strong hand. I don't want it to make it look like I'm trying to take no weak stab from this guy. If I make a small bet, he's probably going to call no matter what. But my plan here is it don't come to it. But my plan was I was going to bet here. And as long as the, the river was not a terrible card, I plan to shove and put max pressure on him. But this right here ends up getting the fold from this gentleman. And he learned, hey, we're not going to believe the hatter. And I mean, you, you got to. These are one of these type of hands where you really got to think it out and make sure. Like I said, position awareness is so important. So I wouldn't do this if I was out of position. But this was one hand I really wanted to see what this dude was doing. And when you see someone three-button as much as him, he's usually light. And right here, you'll see eventually. I don't know why he does all this tanking and stuff. But he folds. And, of course, we're not showing nothing. We had it. All right, y'all. See y'all next time.